I need to follow up uh, on the line of questioning of the good gentleman from Schuylkill County with regard to the shore system IT upgrades, uh, that timeline for project completion, and then tying it into the last line of questioning. I, I will tell you, I served two terms in the House prior to coming to the Senate, I was elected to the Senate in 2018, and dealing with the challenges with regard to the PALS uh, system has been something I have worked on since I arrived here in the legislature. There were significant delays. Prior to Commissioner Johnson's tenure, um, it, it, was, it was really um, quite challenging and really not done well. And so I would urge you uh, to please, with the Shore System IT upgrade, stick to that two-year timeline. We can't afford to have the kinds of challenges with the Shore IT upgrades that we had with the PALS upgrades. Um, but I wanted to talk to you today uh, with regard to nonprofit involvement in the 2020 election. Um, there were many reports that counties across the state received donations from nonprofit entities. Um, the Center for Tech and Civic Life, uh, funded by Facebook CEO, uh, Google, um, gave $2.5 million to Chester County, gave money to my home county, York County, and there's been a fair amount of coverage in the media and questions to me uh, by my constituents. And need to understand uh, where you stand on nonprofits being allowed to contribute uh, to subsidizing election equipment, either at the state, county, or local level. Thank you. Um, so I just want to comment on the first part of you know um, your your statement uh, today, and just to share that I am absolutely committed um, to. In, you know, the success of the Shore Modernization Project. I know how critical it is for the counties um, and for the citizens of the state. So just know that you have my full support and commitment to that. Um, with respect to the non-federal grants, um, public support of elections is, is, nothing, is nothing new. Um, election officials uh, are always grateful for support uh, when it comes to elections administration. And I, like other uh, election officials um, all over the country, um, to be quite frank, are very thankful that the public last year understood the need to support local election officials. Again, just over a year ago, uh, PA, we, we got our first COVID case. And it was during that time we were preparing for the primary. It was still going to be in, um, I think it was April, March or April. Um, people, once, you know, they were watching what was happening in the world and other parts of the country uh, that were affected by the pandemic first, people were terrified, uh, poll workers were terrified, election officials were scared, and I mean that wholeheartedly, about how we were going to safely so conduct the election So I take it that you, you believe that it is appropriate. In light of that, do you believe that, uh, or can you tell me, are there any restrictions on who can give money to the state or counties to assist in the legislative or in the elections process? Right, so before any funds are accepted, please understand that there is a review and a sign-off process. Who um, reviews and, it and who signs off on it? The Office of Chief Counsel, uh, the Office of the General Counsel, we look to make sure that there's no conflict of interest the Office of the Attorney General, the Office of the uh, Budget. We're all looking, we're, we're all looking at those So prior um, to those the County of York receiving those dollars, the Department of State's Counsel, the Attorney General, um, and other legal entities within the administration review it. So in terms of vetting, um, who gives money to these nonprofits? Do, do we know how they're being funded? Um, that these nonprofits, so do they have to reveal where their dollars come from? Right. I so have to reveal where my campaign contributions come from, and anyone who influences an election uh, has to reveal where their money comes from. Do, do they need to reveal where their money comes from? So again, there is a review process to look for any conflicts of interest. I think you asked who can give money, anyone, can donate funds and it goes through a vetting process to ensure that there's no conflict 
of interest. Those funds last year were used for PPE, making sure that there were enough poll workers, enough staff to canvas ballots. These are things that were necessary to conduct the election last year. I'm sure yourself and the other senators, you yourself have spoken with your county, your county election officials, and they have shared with you how hard it was for them to conduct elections last year, how much time and energy they spent. And again, they wanted to do that safely, and they needed resources. The public, it wasn't just funds from the two that you mentioned or CTCL. There were businesses that were contacting us, emails saying, I have enough plexiglass shields. Can I donate those? I mean, it was just astronomical and wonderful that people were donating not only their funds but all of their time. And I don't, I completely agree with you. At the end of last year, all of those things is the reason why this department, yes, we were able to leverage those funds and the counties as well to ensure that elections last year could be safely conducted. And certainly we all aspire to that. I think what's important is that there's transparency and accountability in terms of dollars that are used to influence elections. People and the public need to know where those dollars are coming from. There's been a lot of concern on all sides of the aisle of making sure that we are completely transparent as to who influences our elections. And I think, you know, what I would love to continue this conversation. My time here is limited. I see the chairman giving me the eye. But, you know, our responsibility as an appropriations committee is understanding our stakeholders, where they are lacking, what type of oversight there is, as well as how much access to voter information or any changes that were made to accommodate those people. And look, we have a governor who has a gift ban in place. I cannot even offer you a bottle of water out of just basic hospitality when you come to meet me in my office because of concern over, you know, asserting too much influence. But there is concern because we now have counties and even our state accepting large sums of money from nonprofits. And we're just trying to make sense of that so that we can answer our constituents. So I look forward to continuing our conversation and appreciate your testimony today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.